Welcome to another episode of the XL Tribesman Podcast. I need to put my order down. <laughs> Today, I'm joined by um, an influencer that I've been watching forever. He goes by a very interesting name, which I do want to know the history behind, Carpe Diem. Um, for those Carpe of you who don't Diem. know him, introduce yourself, Carpe Diem, to the people. Tell them, like, tell them your name, because... I think we just know you as Carpe Diem. Yeah. So it's Carpe Diem G. DMG. Oh, sorry. I got the <laughs> Carpe Diem G. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm Carpe Diem G. Uh, big and tall influencer on Instagram and now TikTok. We're going to get into this TikTok thing a little later because <laughs> it looked like that's where where our audience really lives at. Hey. You know, hey. It's why I have people on the podcast because they help us figure out how to get to the next level and if we have that might be an untapped market but we'll get into that a little later. Yes, Go ahead. Sir. yes sir so my name is destin grayson i'm from uh i live in columbus ohio uh i've been there for about okay. show me state <laughs> y'all yeah. proud, proud of our wow or what <laughs> yeah the midwest the mighty midwest um i'm a part of uh alpha phi alpha fraternity incorporated uh married one kid um i've been doing this influencer, or I guess you call it influencer. I've, now I'm like a, con, I say content creator. Um, yeah, because I feel like you move beyond. I feel like influencer is 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 a name reserved for people who only influence. I think once you're responsible for creating, editing, sketching, <laughs> doing, recording, filming, mixing, mastering, mm -hmm. that you move into a whole nother stratosphere. You right, influencers sound like. That ain't all I do. Yeah, right. Listen, I have to figure out how to make these cameras work. Hey. I got to figure out how to make me look good. Right. I got to figure out how to do my transitions. You feel That's me? not an influencer at that point. Right, right. So you're right. I'm going to stop calling myself that because I'm not. I'm a content yeah. creator. Content Continue. creator. Yeah, put some respect on our name. You know what I'm talking about? I'm pulling up on you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I also, uh, my wife and I, we have a um, a company, a business called Just Friends, 614. So we do uh, parties and events for young black professionals in Columbus, Ohio. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. See, the more you know. I knew about that, but I didn't know what the purpose of. I thought y'all were party promoters. I didn't know it was specific. Uh -huh. See, the more you know. Specific demographic, yeah. So it's for the young black professional. But it's open for all. You know, we're definitely inclusive. Uh, we had different events. So coming up, we have an event called uh, Juneteenth-ish. So it's a week before Juneteenth. And we decided to do it a week before just because Juneteenth, the actual week is becoming so saturated that, that day. So we're like, let's do it a week before just so we can have a free Juneteenth type of situation. We do, Yeah, yeah, we do it for the community. We have uh, different sponsors. We have different um community stakeholders come through uh say a few words we have uh, local performances we also support uh black vendors so we have um black vendors all over um the uh the park that we that we use and it's just you know to support, celebrate the culture you know um we really we, we're really not messing with the fourth of july anymore because we weren't free then so you know juneteenth is where we at Gotta let the people know we were not free. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to get into is I've been following you for quite some time. I must say, it feels like everything on the internet feels longer than it is. So I'm a, I'm gonna say about four years. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I feel like I've been following you a long time. I've been following you since before you got married. So how long has that been? Uh, we we we're, we're gonna be married in we got married in 2019, which was uh. It's almost three years, so yeah. Okay, so before that. Yep, so about four years, yes. You're right. Yes, y'all used to do like these little photo series, um, hashtag with your destination, Grayson, I believe. Destination and Grayson, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've been following you right around that time, maybe a little before that. That's how long it's been. Yes, sir. So for me, I've been watching your evolution, and you're right. You, 
there was you were just doing photos but now it looks like you like i feel like once you start getting into like you we talked about the content creation like you're doing like you did your tailoring series mm -hmm. um you're doing your getting readies with me right now mm -hmm. so what made you move from just influencing like we talked earlier into full-on content creation like what made that a thing for you well it honestly you got to be nimble you know, um, as I said, I talked to, uh, I, I met, uh, Devin on deck, who's a person that I've been really, uh, inspired by some of his work. Oh, his content is flawless. Crazy, crazy. You know, I, I tried to even start a YouTube channel. I got a couple uh, videos up. I need to get back in there cause YouTube is a, a good place to be in as well. But I just saw what he was doing and, you know, he really was never, a picture guy he did a, a few pictures but now it's just all video all short form video and so i'm like okay that makes sense and then you know talking to him he was like you got to get over to you got to go over to tiktok one and two is the short form video because as you can see instagram doesn't care about <laughs> photos anymore <laughs> it's a they said it themselves <laughs> right so it's like it was like yeah even when you go to post the reels is before photos that's that's that tells you where we are exactly exactly so um i just noticed like i i started i did my first reel you know when it first came out and i honestly should have kept doing it kept going because that's when you had the most reach Oh, at the beginning, yeah. Yo, I used to do stupid reels and get like twenty thousand views, yeah. doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I should have kept it, but I just I wasn't comfortable with the the editing software that I was using, and okay. I still. And then I I got you know to be candid and be quite honest, I got into a little funk doing during uh, the pandemic. You know what I mean? Like really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, talking to my wife, she was like. You know, you were really depressed. I could see that you were depressed. Like, I stopped dressing. I stopped even caring about getting my hair cut. I just stopped, like, just care. I was just playing 2K. That's all I was doing, playing 2K. Doing oh, hair. okay. Yeah, so I was just kind of just like, whatever. So when I wasn't in a space to be fresh, I wasn't in a space to be creative as well. So it was more so Thank becoming you. a chore to, know, you know, do these brand... To be creative. Yeah, to do this brand content and all this other stuff. So... Now, we recently moved into a new space, a new home, which um, we did maybe about two or three months ago. But my wife helped uh, put together basically uh, the space where I do all my videos at now. Oh, okay. So you yeah. have like a content creation space in your home. I, you could call it that. It's like our, our den area, but I just mm -hmm. as to, to do my content. It's, it's where you make content. Yeah, I mean, every creator needs a space to create. Like mm -hmm. this, my office is my space to create. It's I, it's actually my coffee because dead ass, this is my actual closet. Like, oh wow, because I, I got too much shit and I don't got nowhere to put it. So I was like, I need a space to put it. But then I was like, I need a space to work more. And I was like, well, I'm just gonna work with my clothes behind right. because that's I, 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 that's what we got to do. Back. So, oh, yeah, you need the, for me, space. that's what it's been. Yep, you need that space. I got that space. And ever since then, I've just been more, like, it's better lighting. It's already set up. All I have to do is just put my little tripod there and just, you know, record and create. So, uh, I guess the workflow has gotten a lot easier, which has allowed now, me to pump out more content. Pardon? Now that you have the space. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then that helps. So, to, to get back to what you were saying, I just noticed a trend that photos weren't doing it anymore. It's mm -hmm. honestly easier for me to do a quick video than try to, like, find a a unique background and try to get a f crazy outfit and look super cool <laughs> in a photo. You know, I really? just, you find it easier to make videos. I think so for me because I can wow. do it myself. Okay. With, with, oh, oh <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you don't need uh, to. Okay. Yeah, cool. I don't need I like mean, a I professional guess. photographer, somebody to edit it, and I got to wait on them. Like, I could just do a video. Like, I did a video yesterday uh, waiting for the barbecue. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. basically, I did it before I left out the house. It took me three minutes to do. And I just put the tripod up in front of the, in front of the, um, in front of the window, and I just stood there. 
but you throw some music on top of it, throw a funny caption, and you got content. There you go. You got your content. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You basically figured out how to make creating content easy, fast, and simple. Because if you're going to be cranking them out, I mean, at this point, I feel like Instagram wants you to put up at least one a day it, to, like, doing anything. At least. So if Instagram wants you to be creating one piece of content a day, you it got to be easy. Yeah. Because if it gets complicated, like, I really want to know. I be thinking to myself, like, the, the comedy creators, I don't know how they create those. How do you... How are you consistently funny three times a day? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> three times a day. Like, I got one joke in me per week. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. They probably got help. They probably, you know, you write it down. Like, a lot of stuff that I've been doing, I've just been writing it down. Like, I have... Like a- oh, so you strategize your content. You don't just uh, uh, turn on the, the camera and record. Oh, yeah. You got like, to have... have you gotta have some type of strategy to make to make make oh. sense, you know. Okay, now we are talking about next level content creation because <laughs> this is not. I mean, I, I feel you. I strategize my content, but that's next level content creation. That's that's when you figure out, okay, this is the shit I actually want to do. Yeah, and then you start saying, okay, I want to do. I know, I know. This week, I got this to do. I got this to do. Okay, let me create. Like I knew I was going on two dates last week, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna create two date night looks with these. And I'm going to do the content before I go on the date. And then I know while I'm on the date, I know that I also want to create more like city content, like like things to do in Atlanta because that's where I'm from or well, that's where I live. So I know I want to do more, more, more content around like things to do in Atlanta. So I know while I'm on the day, I'm recording like whatever the nice places that we go or whatever. So for me, like that's my strategy of thinking, okay, I'm I'm going to get at least five pieces of content out of this two days, right? And then it's also thinking, okay, if I go to a concert, that's a, that's two pieces of content because I'm going to do one of the line and I'm going to do one of the concert. Mm-hmm. And then I might do another one with like me like singing off key because I like to sing off key on purpose sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, so shit like that. That's me thinking about the content that I'm going to create. Right. So you're right. But I think yeah so talk about elevation like how did you used to start creating content and then where how are you now with the content creation uh when i was like super consistent during it when i was really trying to grow over on instagram i mm-hmm. would i guess i would kind of base it off of what i thought the audience needed so i get based it off the of season okay. so right now like i did a top five spring fragrances you know what i mean yes i remember that oh yeah that's some timely stuff and then like i just did a video on an all-white outfit because you got memorial day weekend everybody wants to have an all-white party so just timely stuff you know like here soon i'll probably do a a video on father's day gifts ideas you know thank you i need to Right, you know, so just little stuff like oh, I, that. I got like seven pieces of content to make. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and now um, with with TikTok, people ask you questions, and so your replies becomes the fuel for content. It becomes another piece of content. Right? Yeah, you are so correct, and I know this Instagram obviously copied that from mm-hmm. TikTok because Instagram now has the the reply option. I didn't know. Right. I don't think I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram has a reply. When someone replies to your reel, you can make that the content just like how TikTok does. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you know what? If you probably use that, they'll probably spread it out more because they want people to to use it. So we gotta we gotta use that. I'm glad you mentioned that. See, I never thought about that. Cause that's not how I make content. I never make content from the comments. Yeah. So but that um, bro it's cause like I'll have a video over there on TikTok and it's 10 people. Where'd you get your pants? Where'd you get your pants? Where'd you get your pants? So it's like, okay, rather than uh, going back to all these people, let me go ahead and make a video about where I got pants I and that's content. That's an additional piece of content right there. Yep. And it don't have to be hard. You could just hit the reply button, um, put up, put up a screen recording of where you got it from and then do a green screen. This is where I got my pants <laughs> from. And then move back. It's simple, but 37 seconds, you just made another piece of content. It, it can be really simple. It can all be so simple, simple, but sometimes we rather make it hard. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and that's the thing. I used to think it was so hard and time consuming to make to to make good stuff. So like 
when so like I said, when I first started out and I was being very consistent, I would batch shoot and I would get my photography. Oh, I still do that. Uh, oh, I yeah, still yeah, do that. I would get my photography, but it was more photography. So I have to make sure that I get every single piece of attire and you know uh-huh. all the that because I'm an accessories guy, so all the accessories I got to make sure I got all that stuff, all the shoes, Damn. and so packing all that, and I was just like, bro, this is this is a lot, and so I think I got burnt out on doing that. Honestly, that's what happened. Yeah. So then you found a new medium, yeah. um, which actually helps. I mean, you know, the, eh, you know, I wasn't gonna talk about that, but we could pivot into that. Like, talk about influencer burnout because mm. there's some real shit, mm. and you know. That's some real shit. Yeah. And I'm, was that what you were experiencing when we got in the pandemic, or was it something totally? I think different? it was a bit, of, a bit of both. It led to the the burnout because I wasn't um, inspired to, like I said, I wasn't inspired to get dressed. And so, if I had to get dressed to to make content, it was starting to be a, more of a chore than something that was just easy, natural. Like these get ready with me. Like people are eating that shit up, and that's just me literally getting dressed, like. <laughs> I'm literally like just getting dressed and I guess I'm about to drop one right after yeah, recording. It's like this. I'm like, okay, this is what y'all want to see. But I understand why it's so powerful because once you start giving them the options, be like, should I wear this shirt or this shirt? This is what I really this is the type of stuff I go through when I'm getting dressed. And to explain like, okay, I'm gonna wear these boots because it'll give the look a little edge, or explaining why I chose the cologne that I chose or why I put on the accessories that I, you know, I listen to I listen to your post about cologne because that's that's an area of life <laughs> that I you know I have not ventured mm-hmm. into that much. I um, you know, whatever Dove smells like, that's what I smell like. I don't really do too much of the. Yeah. However, I've decided I wanted to. I have decided that in my mid thirties, I want to have a signature scent, like when I. I want to walk in a room and before I turn the corner, people like, yep, Kirk here. I smell him. I, I, that's what I'm looking what you for. Got, what you got? And I haven't mind. found it yet. I like, I like floral. I like light. I want to smell like, I want to smell like 6 p.m. in San Diego at 7.50. That's very specific, but I like to smell like springtime. Boy, that's, I, mean, I don't like nothing too heavy. Toy Boy. Try, uh, try Toy Boy by, uh, Mos- I think it's Moschino. To- Toy Boy. T-O-B-O-Y-B-O-Y. T-O-Y-B-O-Y. B-O-Y, okay. All get right. A, get I'm a sample of it. Out. It's not expensive. Like, that's one of my, it's super airy. It's unique. It's got, like, rose into in it. Um, yeah, sure. I'm yeah, so like a better verse. So, but the thing is, don't pin yourself down to like one, one cent because with fragrances, they can change by your mood. It can change by the weather. It's all different types of stuff. Like, so. wait, what you mean? Yeah. Cause I saw you talking about daytime and nighttime and I was like, wait, why do we have a different fragrance yeah. for the day? Explain that. Cause I, I don't know. About okay. It. So like you said, you like, uh, fresh scent, so that'll be like your uh, Dolce Cabana. Uh, uh, what's it called? The it's the little light one. Um, but you got you got two different types of Dolce Cabana. You got the the one which you can wear at night. It's more boozy. It's a warm fragrance. It's you know it it it's, it doesn't project crazy. But once you're in close with somebody, then they can smell you, and that's when you want them to smell you if you're on a date. So that's why you have like date night colognes and stuff like that. But then you also have colognes that project really crazy, like that Dior Sabaj Elixir is just. Oh, that's the one you smell. That's the one. If you, if you want somebody to smell you when you walk in the room, you throw that one on and everybody's going to know that you just walked in that room. But you wouldn't want to wear that on a date because you might, your, your date be like, man, this, <laughs> you smell good, but it's so strong. You know what I mean? So you want something more. Uh-huh. Strong. You fake. So I will wear Dior Sauvage like if I'm going to a club or if I'm going to somewhere outside that I just that uh, crazy. Um, you know what I mean? So, okay. um, but a, 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 another like Prada Lone is a good daytime fragrance. It's, really, it's all purpose. You can wear that anywhere. Um, 
it's clean, it's not offensive. You can wear it to work, you wear it to the gym, you can wear it to move anywhere. So it's like like and I got into it because I used to be an oils guy. I used to wear like Egyptian musk. Like that was my <laughs> I have Egyptian musk. Right. And I still I have that. The little rolling yeah. thing. I got no beef with the Egyptian musk, but that's where I used to go with it and you know. Look at the elevation. Yeah. Look where you are talking about Dior Savage. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so in the spirit of growth, one thing I want to know is, um, so I know that you're, um, you've been growing your Instagram, but you talked about, um, before we started the podcast, you talked about the growth you're having over there mm-hmm. at TikTok. So explain to me, like, what was the moment on TikTok? Like, what was the video that, that you saw that was like moving the needle for you? What was that number? So it was, so I was at 120 followers last mm-hmm. the end of last month. Okay, well, yeah, we're still in uh, we're in May currently while we're doing it or whatever. So the end mm-hmm. of last April, I posted a video and it was my first ever get ready with me. And I posted okay. it over there. I made it on some late night. Just I'm just I'm like I had this outfit on. I'm like man, this is fly like or. It was a suit that I wore to work and I took it off and I was like, I think I was at home by myself and nobody was at the house. So I was like, I got some time in my hands. Let me just make this video. And um, okay. just all the little things. It was very uh, like it, it wasn't on accident. Like, so the shoehorn is, is a big thing that I've been using. <laughs> yes, that you, that, <laughs> I saw you crack the shoehorn and I was like, wait yeah. a minute. It got an yeah, so the shoehorn, because I've seen people use a shoehorn, but I've never seen anybody use the extended shoehorn, the, the retractable one. So I was like, okay, I can put that in there. That can be a piece. I could put a candle in there just to set the vibe and then just get dressed. Yes, you always yeah. like the like yeah, the, it's like, I'm sure I'm, candle. I'm like, I want you to be immersed. I want it to be a vibe. So when I posted that, I just mm-hmm. posted it. I thought I was going to perform like every other TikTok I did. Maybe get 500 views you know what i mean and i was just like whatever now eventually i was gonna post it over on instagram because i had a lot better engagement on instagram because i had fifteen thousand followers as opposed to 120 i posted mm-hmm. it and i don't have any notifications on tiktok so i didn't know what was happening i woke up i had like 1500 followers and 10,000 views on this video i was like I was like, I hit. I was like, it, it, it finally hit. You get a lick. Like, <laughs> so I was like, okay, <laughs> this is this is the growth that they've been talking about. And so I was like, all right, 10,000, mm-hmm. cool. This is awesome. But I didn't realize it was just going to keep going and going and growing, going. Growing. So it's currently, I think, at like almost 300,000 views. And it, But it just keeps going. Cool. Like it keep, People keep commenting. People keep sharing. Um, and then the thing that I did, and I, this was because I did research from YouTube, I made sure to put a call to action at the end of the video. Ah. Yeah. yeah so a lot of people. Talk to me about call to action because I know about them, but you reminded me that I've never used You probably it. have used it. Like call to action is just saying like and follow. Like that's it. Or. Comment below. Oh, you know okay. What I'm That's a call to action. Oh, like, I've done that. Yeah. I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> so, but a lot of people okay. miss that opportunity. They'll have a video that takes off, but they don't tell them to follow. They don't tell them to like. And so once once um the algorithm see like, okay, people are following him off of this piece of content. This must be good. Let's keep pushing it out. Let's keep pushing it out until people stop following or until people stop liking. And like I said. <clears throat> it's been a slow burn, but it's almost at 300,000. And since then, I've tried to post it. A- That's not slow. You said that was a, a month, month ago. ago. I, I mean, and I guess, is that is that really slow? Oh, you can have a video go 2 million in a night over there <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. I guess, in theory, yeah, if that's yeah. the case, then yeah, so that's like, slow, right? I've seen, I got literally to go from that in a month sounds like a... And it got a million views. So it's like, yeah. Ooh. So I, that's why I say it's a slow burn, but I'm not mad. That's the the most, the highest piece of content that I've ever had. Um, but yeah, so I, that's the moment. 
when I saw that, I was like, okay, this shit is real. So then I start posting something every day. I start and but what I I think the mistake that I made, I didn't. I should have just kept doing get ready with me's. I was like, man, they don't want to see that no more. I got to give them something different. TikTok is totally different because you're the following. The, the content is not going to your following first. It's going to every... And they're spreading it all over the place, right? Got it. They're, they're spreading, spreading it to, it to everybody, everybody else. So the thing is to do the sa- exact same thing because you're going to get all new eyes on there. And then people are going to be like, oh, this is cool. I like this get ready with me stuff. And, you know, and so I, I've now... That's like my, my... I know if I want something to really perform well, let me just go ahead and do a get ready. <laughs> I agree with you. My getting ready is better yeah. than any other piece yeah. of content. I'm but I also got the fragrance. Clearly, people want to see it, so that's yeah. what I'm gonna give you. That's what y'all want. I'm gonna give y'all until it is till it gets stale. But I also want to yep. sprinkle in yep. other stuff. So another video that's been doing very well is the Hoochie Daddy <laughs> shorts. Body love, yes. We are now entering into Hoochie yeah. Daddy yeah. season. And believe it or not, I yes. I made that video because I was on Twitter. And I saw the comedian, I saw that. I was like, this is a funny-ass sound. I'm like, this could be a good video. It like, is. That's how I think now. I was like, this could be content. So I was like, I can record it. But then I was like, let me look at this page because I want to make sure that I, I give the the um, the um comedian his just due. So if he has it on Instagram, I use his sound to make a video. Went on Instagram. He had the sound. Went on uh, TikTok. He Oh, they made it a remix now, and it got music. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, because it's, yeah, it was two different ones. So, it was that one, and it was the one with the girl saying, and this was an old video that she did with, like, you know, where you going, Gray Short? Take Gray Short, like, Cat Calling Me. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one, too. I've seen that one, too. <laughs> yeah, Cat Calling Yeah, so, that's me just, like, that, so, rather than being late to the trend, I was one of the first people on there. So, like, Early if you go look at that sound, my video is like one of the top six sounds, you know what I'm saying? So that was just me being 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 smart, being nimble, be like, okay, let me go ahead and get off my butt, make this quick video real quick so I can, you know, hop on that trend. You know, I wasn't looking at it like that when I heard it. I was like, oh, this is funny, and I just moved on. See how see how different creators think about things differently? I didn't know I didn't know it was going to be But you never you don't never I didn't, I didn't think that it was gonna be like that, but I've just seen people talk, talking about the thighs, like on Twitter. Because, like, a lot of stuff starts on Twitter, believe it or not. Like, yeah. Everything yeah. starts on Twitter. And I that's why I keep my Twitter. I stay on there. I'm pretty active on there. But a lot of my content ideas come from Twitter. Because, like, I'll see it on Twitter. Then you'll see it on Instagram two days later. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But that's, the, yeah, that's, the, that's, that's where it started over there at TikTok. So, basically, I went from 120 last month and in a month i got almost fifteen thousand. so i'm almost got the same amount of following that i have on instagram in a month which is crazy that's the kind of growth that i'm looking for in 2020 of the two i want explosive growth i feel like i've been at this entrepreneurship for i think this is year six or year seven I'm sorry. That's a lot. I've been at this business for seven years. I've been an entrepreneur wow. for 12 and I'm ready for like something to go. Cause I, um, I feel like my bank account doesn't reflect the amount of work I've put in. So, I'll tell you what, I'm man, I, I, I really appreciate the platform that you made. Like I, I know you said you've been following me, but I've been following you. I've seen the different changes that you've been doing with the XL tribe. You know, I was one of you were one of the probably the first pages that like reposted my content when I was starting out, and I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 oh, it, it allowed me to, you know, reach a new audience and then also become cool with other people. You know, in the big and tall space. And so, thank you for providing that that platform for the big and tall gentleman. You know what I mean? It's it's dope stuff. You're very welcome. I feel like it's a, I feel like my job is, is very rewarding, but it's silently Mm -hmm. rewarding because I know that it's helping people. I know that it's changing people's lives, but I need y'all to know that I really, I really like, I really do this because I want to see us everywhere that we can be like, I'm, I'm waiting 
I feel like my job will never be done because there's too many hearts and minds to change. But I feel like one of the major factors that I think about is like when I saw that Doshan Gabbana gave DJ Khaled his own line and then the line went up to a 4X, that to me says we're heading in the right direction. That's what I'm looking for. I feel like when luxury fashion catches up, that's when I know we've done our jobs, you know? And so um, um, so that leads me into my random question round that I wanted to get into. So it's about entrepreneurship. And the question says, if you had no deadlines, um, what project or task would you focus on right now? Hmm. Hmm. Like if you had to worry about paying no bills, you just could focus on one thing like what man would that i mean ideally i would love to have like a brand for the big and tall gents you know what i'm saying or be a uh you know a, a thought leader to, for a brand you know just to help bring like the sizing get the sizing right get the get 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 what we want to see right because it's like that's the that'd be the biggest part you know what i mean you get something you find something that's fire that's dope and then it's like you come in the mail and it don't fit so it's like that's what i want to be like a, a, a just just help him i would help with that you know what i mean give some ideas on what we i have a name for that i have a title for that because i've also thought of that idea it's a brand i want to be a brand mm -hmm. years. that's what i want to do when i retire i want to bridge the gap between what you see in the store and who's making the decision for that to show up in the store? Because that's where we're not, and that's mm -hmm. where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because if if in those rooms y'all had big and tall people in those rooms, I would tell you we're not wearing that shit. <laughs> Straight up like that. Somebody we're not wearing over that shit. At, like, Boo I would also Somebody tell you Boohoo is doing good work over there. Somebody over at ASOS. Well, ASOS used to be really good. They've been kind of falling off on the plus uh, design. Yeah, I haven't. Really? Got... I'm saying they were the first in the space. Yeah, but I'm saying they haven't, like, they haven't been keeping up. Oh, they haven't been as as uh, yeah, on it yeah, as they, they have were. Good think. with the trendy stuff, but they haven't been on trend for the big and tall guys. It, it seemed like I don't know if guys haven't been buying it or purchasing it, but it seemed like they kind of did it. They're not as like focused on getting big and tall product over there, like new stuff to me. You know what? Now, ASOS is a brand that I hear about constantly, but I have never, ever. I've purchased from ASOS once. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you. There's no reason. I'll have nothing against them. It's just when I think about fashion, not fashion in general, when I think of like going to purchase something, I just never think about them. I don't know why I don't. I don't know what is it. I just never get led to their website. And one time I got led to their website and I purchased a piece of River Island. And I remembered River Island because Rihanna had did a line with them like many, many years ago, like long before she got into fashion. She did a line with River Island, maybe like in her, like, not nah, good girl gone bad, but like her rated R era. She had a line with them. Um, and I remember them. So when I saw it on ASOS, I was like, oh, let me buy this. To this day, that is one of the most consistent pieces of shirt that I wear. It's a it's a peach colored short sleeve shirt. And to this day, it's the one shirt that I wear more than any other there shirt in go. my closet. And I have like 500 <laughs> shirts. Don't tell nobody, but I have like yeah. I have a lot of shirts. But I wear that one, and for the life of me, I'm like, so if I like the shirt, why don't I keep buying the shirt? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But ASOS is definitely a brand yeah, I want to focus cool. on. Like, I mean, I, I've done stuff with them before, um, but like I said, recently, I haven't, be, I, like, I'll go in there just expecting to see something fire, and it's just like, eh, it's just, it's, like, I'm, I'm seeing better stuff at Walmart. Like... <laughs> Let's, you know what? Let's see. 
See, we were going to see you <laughs> skipping ahead. See, because that's right. where we're going next. All right. So I wanted to talk about what I like to call your mm-hmm. mid-tier luxury. What I call mid-tier luxury is where I feel that Walmart and Target have right stepped here. into. And I don't know if this, I don't know if this, see, see, see. This go. Walmart right here. See, what I have what I have felt over these past few years is that Walmart and Target, first of all, they started creating better quality clothes. Their clothes might cost twenty dollars, but I'ma tell you you're gonna get you gonna get um as I learned from one as I learned from my mentor, Walmart and Target is giving you more cost per wear than things that I spend more money on now. I don't know what it is with their quality of clothes, but it's not fading. You know, the stitches aren't starting to yeah. come out of the seams. The, you know, it, it's really starting to become quality things I can like buy and I know they'll last, which Walmart never used to be yeah. like that. So I like wherever they're going. So whoever's yeah. taking y'all in this direction, y'all need to keep them on, on board. Okay, Walmart and Target, you hear me? Keep them. So I want to know how often do you feel, how often do you shop? Like, is Walmart included in your shopping um, trips? I guess we'll call them. Absolutely. I mean, now for sure, like for these shirts, I've probably gotten like these type of shirts, these button down joints. Man, oh, button down. So I probably cool. got about five or six of those shirts from, from Walmart. Like just <laughs> easy five or six. <laughs> I think I got like hey, nothing nine, wrong with that. Maybe a lot. I got it from I got the wall, and I also got about four from Target. So it's like I just been caught. Like if I see it, it's in my size. I know that I need to get it now because that size is gonna be gone when you come back. It ain't gonna be. You know. That's what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that. I feel like, uh, do we not know, as a community, do we not know that Big and Tall exists at these stores? Because when I go to Walmart, one thing I consistently do is record, which I still have to put out that video. See, I'm the the content creator. I record everything, (laughs) and then I make nothing. That's my that's my issue. So I have everything recorded in my phone, but I never make it in mm-hmm. like it never turns into anything. Like I have seven thousand videos in my phone that that have tons of content. I just whatever. We'll get that another day. But so I record every time I go to Walmart, right? And one thing I notice consistently, especially in the WalMarts that have, so I learned Walmart has higher in line things that they don't push to the to your low end mm. stores. I just learned I that, that actually. So Bonobos, yeah. you know the brand Bonobos? They have a Walmart brand. What's that's it called? specifically for Walmart. But that hmm. it's called okay. Fielder. I haven't seen that. Yes. So they also have Fruit Assembly. assembly. I, I have which is another assembly things. Yeah. Right. But the free assembly is not in every Walmart because I have been looking for free assembly for two years since they came out and I could never find them in the store. Randomly, I went to a higher end Walmart and I found it. And I found, (laughs) oh, um, where is that? That, where was that? Shambly area. It's like right outside of Atlanta. Um, and I discovered. They have like a entire, you know how stores used to have like sections, like, you know, when you go to Macy's and it has like the, it has like the polo section. So they have a fielder, a, a bonobo section, and they have a, a free assembly section. Wow. I have never seen that. Number one. Number two, I mean, them polos, they gave Pima cotton for $22. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> See, so what I want to discuss really with, with Walmart um, is you said you, you pick up about four or five pieces. So I want to know why don't we know that Walmart have these things? Because when I go, I see the sizes that are left 
are the five X's <laughs> and the five X's. So two group right. of people don't know it exists. I don't know. I mean, I don't really. Um, I've never seen an advertisement for No Boundaries because that's the shirts that I like out of there. That No Boundaries stuff. I've seen the Free Assembly um, advertisements because I remember wasn't that President Jamal uh, Jamal Adams, the NFL player. He did an ad for them. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> yes, I remember that. Crazy. Yes, like, for Free Assembly. Like, let me go on here and see what's going on. And I think some people are like. Some people just like going into the store, being able to get it, being able to try it on. Like they don't know their size like that. Like so, shopping online might be intimidating for some people. But I'm very comfortable with shopping online because okay. I know for a fact that you can find whatever you what you need on there, and they have extended sizes online as well. Like I got this shirt, I got from Target. I tried it on in like a two X, and I'm like, this is not going to cut it. So then I went online. They had a three X tall. You can't find that in the store. Yes, Walmart and Target both. Not Walmart. Target mm-hmm. sells mm-hmm. their talls online. They don't sell yeah. it in stores. I don't yeah. know why. So, but they don't. I got I got like four shirts and a three X tall. Like I knew that, but I had to go in there and see how it fit. And then I was like, okay, now I'm comfortable with buying like three or four of these shirts. And so like my trip to LA, I had all Walmart. JC Penny and and Target shirts. Like that's all I packed. And it worked out. So what I wanna know um from you, I wanna move into the section where I ask you about a famous what I call famous. It's not really famous, but like I call it famous. Instagram post. Like I wanna know like what was the inspiration behind the post? Because a lot of times people don't know, not a lot of times, most times the viewer of the post doesn't know it might took you 17 times to take that photo. or That's if you're taking your own photo. Or if, like, if you're a photographer like me, sometimes you take 100 shots mm-hmm. and you only find one. Um, so... I recently saw you post about the Nike yeah. ad. Do you remember this ad? What, first of all, how did Nike approach you? And then how did you end up narrowing it down um, to that photo? So I didn't use, so, okay. So Nike, that was the third time I've actually worked with Nike. So, yeah, we're, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, they, okay. they've been rocking with your boy. He let y'all know. <laughs> they've been rocking with your boy, and I appreciate it. Like, whoever over there, they, I, that's what I try. I try to be very pleasant with whoever is the, you know, the coordinator because I want to make sure I get my content in on time. I, I, I give them the deliverables that they that they need. I might even over uh, over deliver. Over deliver. So they can have everything. They can have all the mm-hmm. options. Yeah. Under promise and over deliver. That is mm-hmm. Apple strategy, and it works. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so I mean, I, I have reached out to like the t- the two previous times I worked with my best friend. One of my best friends in Dayton because I just wanted to be local. I wanted to be like, all right, I'm going back. Home. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I went back home. You know, I did a couple uh, uh, shoots right downtown Dayton because I'm like, man, we're gonna be loyal to the soil. We're doing it all homegrown. The third shot, loyal to come the on, soil. loyal to the soil. You sound <laughs> like you're a rapper in in your heart. Come hey, on. you got something got else gym, to tell man. us, we Mr. Crazy? Um, okay. Yeah. So I think he was in Atlanta when I needed to get this, the last one done. So I had reached out to a guy that I had worked with, out with. And, you know, we've been, he did a video for me. And I was like, that video was fire. Let's, let's like, I got a big opportunity. Let's try to do this. And so he got it out. He got it done. Got it to me quick. That actual location I did is like one of the first places that I've done. I did content before, like that. Was, I first started off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was this. That's where you were shooting content, at. and it's just dope in there because it's like clear. It looked like, huh? All the lights coming in. All and the lights is, is coming on in on every side because I can see. So it's just perfect for a good picture, um, and it just looked like you in spacer. So it looked like it looked. It just looked dope. So I was like. I want to do this next one there. And then we just went outside, did a couple shots. But 
<coughs> yeah, that's basically how how it was, man. They, they, Nike reached out to me that first time, and they caught me by surprise because you know when they pay for your content, they're they're gonna put that they put it everywhere. Like I was in, a, I'm in an email blast, I'm in Snapchat ads, I'm in Instagram ads, I'm in. They had me on the Nike app, so it's like they they're gonna put your stuff where it need to go. See, and I appreciate that. You know why I appreciate that? More than the visibility that it mm-hmm. gives to you, the content creator, what it really does is tell people that big and tall are, yeah. is worthy of being seen. Because one thing that really burns my biscuit is when a brand pays for your content mm-hmm. and sit on it. It don't burn my biscuit as long as I'm getting paid. <laughs> it don't burn my biscuit. <laughs> I, need that I don't even money. care about that the money, money, man. I, I want my cheese. work to That's be seen. To help out big, big and tall fellas to add representation, but I'm also trying to, you know, get compensated appropriately as well. <laughs> I mean, I understand. I understand. It, it, money's important, but for me, it's about, for me, it's about, like, I would rather get no compensation, but my work be seen all across the globe than you pay me and my work is shelved. It just yeah. I mean, my, I'm going to yeah. continue to post content regardless. You know what I mean. So that's why we got our own platform. That's why you got your own platform. Mm-hmm. We don't have to depend on nobody else. That's right. That's yeah. absolutely correct. You don't have to depend on it. But <laughs> let's be real now. <laughs> See, when Nike puts you all across the globe, that, that's a, yeah, yeah. That's on some. That's on some extraterrestrial level because they have a brand loyalty that is almost. Oh, I think only Apple and Microsoft got that kind of brand loyalty Nike got, and people, people daddies grew up liking Nike and their kids yeah. like Nike because they daddy yeah, like that kind of brand loyalty. Oh, that Nike now they rank it. They got Nike. Yep. Oh y'all, y'all got Adidas. Oh, I can't rock with y'all. That kind of brand loyalty. Uh, I'm just saying, some people like some people might be yeah. jealous to Adidas. I'm like, I don't have any type of, you know, mm-hmm. I, I like whatever's fly, whatever's fresh. Honestly, I kind of go away from mm-hmm. what's trending and get kind of, you know, try to start a new wave, and then eventually that becomes the wave, and then I gotta switch it up again. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's just crazy just trying to stay mm-hmm. in front of the stuff. But at this point, I'm just, huh? Yeah, I, I just I wear stuff that I like, wear stuff that's comfortable. And and do it like that. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to know in closing is if you had one word to sum up your journey or a piece of advice, either one that comes to you, um, to give yourself, like you've been influencing now for four. what, five years, yeah, six four. years? Okay. So at the beginning of that journey, I'm pretty sure there's things you look back at now and be like, why did I do that? So like, what's one piece of advice you give 2018? Uh, Stay consistent. Consistency is is key. You know, Um, that, yeah, that's where I I, I kind of messed up at uh, big time because I started only creating content when I was getting paid to do it. And that's where it get it get ugly, it get hairy. You don't get that same and type type of uh, genuine content, you know. Because um, I see concert curators that every single post that they post is just a sponsored post or some type of ad, and it's like you can't really build your following or build a good relationship with people if all you're posting is stuff that other people are paying you. So it's like, what do you like? Because you keep posting stuff that people pay you we don't know what you actually like we don't know what your actual style is so um what i was yep. and that's actually what's been helping me on instagram currently you know like i've uh so since okay. I, I did to myself i did a 30-day challenge on tiktok and i think i wanted to do you know post every single day <laughs> and i did i might have missed like two or three days <laughs> but the reason that helps is because, like I said, I don't really post on Instagram every day. My frequency over there is probably like four days a week. So I'm always going to have an influx of mm-hmm. content for 
my Instagram because I'm posting so much over on TikTok. You feel me? So um yeah. Now I I my <laughs> my following has been like at fifteen thousand for two and a half years on Instagram. As soon as I started posting Ooh. like reels consistently for the, like last month or this month, whatever, the month of June, I've gotten a thousand followers just by posting consistent. See, just by, and so I'm just like, being I would have been consistent like this consistent. during the, like, that's where I've messed up. If I would have been on TikTok or just posting reels consistently during the pandemic, like I would have been in a lot better shape. Pan- pandemic growth, pandemic growth helped me because there was nobody in the world that wasn't watching you while we were in the pandemic. Mm. What else the fuck do we have to do? So that that growth really helped me. But I understand yeah. you had to take yeah. time to get yourself together, and now you're together, <laughs> and now you're posting shit that we're all out right. here talking about. Right. Where the so Gucci daddy shorts from? Where them outfits at? Where them yeah. sets at? Right. I mean, Wait, those are not <laughs> easy to find. I know this is like a whole PSA, but who you that in shorts ain't easy to find? Those, uh, they got some shorts at the four inch, three, five inch seam shorts at uh, Walmart, man. They got a whole, they got the cloth ones, they got the like linen blend Damn. ones. Like, <laughs> that they, uh, yeah, I got a 2X. The 2X is just like not, right on top. too much bag in it. Bend down the wrong way, it could be a wrap. But um, I'm just getting into the, I think the ones I got, the sets I have are from Boohoo Man and Fashion Over Man. I'm at 3X and I'm just right for the bottoms. You know what I mean? Like the bottoms sh- don't, don't, they not like super baggy. They right on time. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've been in the gym too, so I got, okay. I'm trying to preserve my sexy and make sure that I'm eating right because I'm, I'm trying to. I, I love being a big and tall cat, but I also got to be healthy too. You know what I'm saying? So that that's very important. So I got that's a thing. Yeah, I got my that's dietitian, and I got my trainer, thing. so I'm just trying to, you know, improve improve in that area. And and also I want to explain because you okay. didn't ask what my name, Carpe DMG, Carpe. Yeah, we I did. did. I did. That. We so skated we right on past that. Didn't we? I like cell phone content. I do, but I always feel like I could do better and I can elevate and I have everything. I I have, I have seven cameras. Like I can create, like oh yeah, definitely better you stuff know. with my camera. So I just. I just try my best too, but I get lazy. Sometimes I do my getting ready on my phone and I can tell the difference. I can tell the difference. Maybe y'all can't, but I can't. It's, it's, it's not even major things. It's just things. Cause my, my eye is trained to see things differently, especially when it comes to audio. That's why I didn't want to record this on my phone. Cause like the audio, but I don't know. I've never, like I said, I've never used this program. So I don't know what this program, what it's going to look like, but Anyway, we didn't went way over what else was talk about. Um, Carpe Diem, tell the people where they can follow you. Um, if they've been hiding under some sort of rock, turn over All the right, stone so and again. give them your IGs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So your hands is Carpe your underscore IG. DMG. That's C-A-R-P-E underscore DMG. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on TikTok. I'm on Twitter, but Twitter is more just a personal page. I don't really, you know, do any type of uh, content creation over there, but mm-hmm. just, just hanging out, chilling. But most okay. of my content is centered around big and tall gentlemen. Um, I'm here to help you get fresh, help you have more confidence in your style, uh, find places to um, get your, you know, your, your, your clothing, you know, so... It's and I'm I'm doing like different stuff on like you know scents and and smells and fragrances. So scents is your scents is your new that's your new that's your new um your, yeah your new, thank um, you thank you niche I, market and I like it stick stick to that scent lane because it it uh, I mean I I am my own content creator and I don't know shit about scents so this 
there's always someone that doesn't know something exists. Although it still surprised me to this day. Not surprising, but it's interesting to me today is how many people don't know where they can find clothes at. Like, not even just your online retailers. Like, there's so many people that don't know, like I said, about the Walmarts, the Targets, the Old Navies. Like, they just don't know. And so, even though you know, it might um, become redundant to you. I always want you to remember when you're creating content, somebody's about to see this content mm. that did not know this existed. So even when you be like, man, I done made 39 getting ready with me. They don't want to see this shit no more. The 40th one. That's it's going to be the I mean, first time somebody see this shit. I'm big advocate over TikTok right now. That's how it works. You know what I mean? And you get a follower. So perfect I've example. Been, um, I, I, I noticed that and I see how other guys dress, like some of the guys over there that think that may be like, the leading big and tall guy on TikTok, and I'm just like, that ain't all the way yet, bro. So let me show you. How, let me show you a little a different option. You know, this is that's your way. I got my way. And then let me show you a lot. And then so you know, way. Like, yep. I used to use the hashtag the public Ivy League, and that's still a part of my whole um, my whole space. But the thing that I, I uh, the thing that that means is that you the public part, part is like streetwear. You know, your casual wear. The Ivy League is, you know, your dressing, your more preppy style, and they both have to coexist. So I like to have a balanced, um, like, that's a good way to explain. Your, I like to have your, a balance in both of those. And so you might see me in a suit, you might see me in a button down, you might see me in a t shirt, you might see me some George, you might see me in some Gucci loafs. You never know. I just, I like clothes, I like to be comfortable, and I'm real big on like dressing for the occasion. And so you have these content creators that are really good with the streetwear, mm -hmm. but then they don't know how to put a suit on. And you, vice versa, you have guys that are great in suits, but they can't do just regular casual outfit. Yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody, but that's where that's really where I start. Thank you. When you do them, that's why I post you. There you go. I'll, I'll follow the suit guy. I'm not him. Not him. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that means. I don't say you are not. Yes, not uh, yeah. I appreciate you having me on, uh, Kurt. You know, it was good to finally connect with you. I know we tried to connect when I was no in Atlanta, problem, man, uh, of, uh, a time or two ago. But I'm going to get back out there, down there, and we definitely just need to, at the least, you know, grab some some lunch or a drink, something. Um, but keep up doing what you're doing, man. Yep. It's, it's good stuff. You've been oh, I'm down. Uh, a leader in this X, in this XL tribe in this big and tall space for a minute. And don't you, you know, don't let, don't let anybody else tell you different. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try to remember that when I'm making content and that shit get on my nerves. <laughs> or when I'm trying to post an IG is like, um, we're still trying to find the connection. And you know that reel that you didn't save yet? Yo, that, that, that shit. Yes, sir. Until next time, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>